she got a problem with the fact that I'm keeping my body sacred, that I'm respecting my temple, okay? Then the throttle made a note to me when I got the answers that I'm to keep my body clean, inside out and outside in. And if you and any of these niggas in this tribe got a problem with it, too goddamn bad, all right? You don't run my life. The most high lay out my path, not y'all. Okay, you're going to stop with this crap. And for the record, we don't wear mini skirts. Okay? We don't wear mini skirts. So all y'all walking around with them little mini skirts on, look at the sisters on the land. They did not dress like that. I don't know who y'all think y'all fooling. And you think you're going somewhere on the Holy Land with Baba, you're not going to get nowhere. Your ass is going to get left behind, following behind black devils. Now, let me move on to the next. Let me put my glasses on and move on to the next. Black devil. Look at her name, Carlita. It's very similar to the name Mylita. Mylita, Carlita, Mylita, Carlita. Baba taught us that years ago about names. You want to check somebody, check your little whorish freaking daughters. All right? Now. <clears throat> now, let me begin. <clears throat> but let me warn you, as I, as I said before, you know, if, and, um, if, if you guys refuse to make any changes after I tell y'all who these devils are, you're going to be held accountable for this. Because just like those 300 Nephilims and the 200 decided to rape those humanoids and then 100 stood by and watched a great crime be committed and they never warned and knew and they never said anything, oh, trust me, excuse me, they are trapped spirits now. They in the etheric world wishing to have a body. And, and they go around torturing humans. Baba laid it out in the Pagadad Shalil Nawaru Narad, the God of light and fire. Y'all need to check that out. So just like I'm telling y'all now, I'm getting ready to lay it down, who these black devils are. Once I tell you, it is on you. It's off my chest and off my soul. I can sleep at night because I didn't walk around and act like I didn't know what was going on and didn't expose these niggas, okay? So... Y'all can go ahead and continue to keep breaking bread with these devils. And remember, the master teacher has already warned us that it's all laid out in our doctrine, that it doesn't end well for them. They lose in the end. So don't come throwing your children over the fence when you're not allowed behind the gates in the Holy Land when the master is released. And make no mistakes, he will be out. And the world know who he is. Check, I, I promise you, this is your last chance to make a difference. So let's get it, fam. Now, we're going to start with the head queen of the hornet's nest of black devils, and that is none other than Waki, Wakia, Wacky, and she suffers from schizophrenic. And those of you who don't know, people that suffer from schizophrenic, they are in contact with demons from the lower realm, okay? Her name is Dale Elaine Brown, a.k.a. the clan mother, okay? Make no mistakes, she is evil. She is not only evil, she is a witch, and she is the head matriarch witch, and she has her spiritual children within our tribe that bow down to her. They work for her. And I want y'all to keep in mind that this is spiritual, okay? This is a spiritual war, and I will name them as well, her, her spiritual children. So please be patient with me, fam, but this is important, okay? This woman, Dale Elaine Brown, is the head witch, okay? And she hates Baba. And the reason why she hates Baba is because she feels that she needs to be the leader, like in the movie The Dark Crystal that Baba taught us about. And it's not just her. She doesn't, she's not the only one that feels she needs to be the leader. The Keflings. When Baba told us to watch that movie, The Dark Crystal, about the Keflings, they were the good ones. The Skeksis was the evil ones, and they felt that they should continue to rule when that 6,000-year rule was up. So she feels like she should be the chosen one, you know. And she used to say stuff all the time like, oh, it's, it's karma is real. Like when Baba got locked up, she left messages on her phone. Karma is real. Karma is real, okay. And she used... You know, she uses Baba's followers, you know, to cater to her ass. I'm like, why don't you just get a Mexican or somebody to come in here and clean up? No, she'll call one of us to clean her house. She'll call one of us to do her hair. She'll call one of us to wipe her behind because I heard she fell and broke her hand. So I'm pretty sure they over there catering to her, not even knowing that she's a, one of the very reasons why Baba's in there. Okay? Now, she has a son that's a multimillionaire. And his name is Kedar Massenberg. And y'all know about him. And so what? He's a millionaire. Y'all already know how that music industry go with the people that get the power. They do satanic rituals. Okay? She has a picture of her son in her living room. 
in her mini mansion in, in Fulton County shaking hands with the President George Bush. Now, you ask anybody that's ever been up there to that federal prison, if you do your investigation, ADX Florence Supermax Prison, George Bush runs that prison, okay? So there's no coincidence, and there's also no coincidence that George Bush is the one who appointed Charles Ashley Royal as a federal judge over Georgia. That's Bobber's, uh, over Bobber's case. That's the man who sent his Bobber to 135 years in prison, even after Habiba came back and said that, it, that, that, that he didn't do it, okay? Now, this, this federal judge, you know, is, he, he violated stuff, and I, and, I, and I found so much dirt on him that, that Wakia, her daughter, and all these demons started attacking me. Okay, you see, because these reptilians, they protect their own, all right? They started attacking me, started slandering my name, started making up stuff so people wouldn't help me. I could have had Baba out of there, you know? But y'all kept following behind them because y'all felt like, oh, they got the power. They're going up on a visit. Oh, that's his sister, you know? But I got a prayer right here that Baba wrote, and I'm going to read that later to show you his own words, what he said about why he's incarcerated, all right? So now, so now, y'all already, I already told y'all that, Ke- that, that Waukee's son is behind Baba being locked up too because Kedar was the very one that funded the trip for Jacob, York, and Habiba when they all went to South Beach, Florida. And this is a fact. I spoke to Fatima York on the phone back in 2010, and she told me, she slipped and said that she wasn't on a three-way call because I was like, oh, you on a three-way call with me for them? She was like, no, I'm not on a three-way call. I don't do that type of jet. The last time I was on a three-way call was me, my brother, and Jacob. So why? And she slipped and said it because I felt her energy when she was like, oh, shoot, she shouldn't have said that. Or maybe she did it intentionally because she just didn't give a shit, you know? But th- what was she doing on a three-way call with Jacob York and her brother when they was watching the news when they raided the land? Why was the three of them on the call, okay? So they all went to South Beach, Florida with the so-called victims with this plot. So make no, no mistakes. Uh, Waukee's DNA children are part of this scheme too, okay? And we will talk about that soon. But um, let's check out how she – I want you all to check out how she always falling, you know. She, uh, no, no, not even that. How she always got her hand out for money from members of the tribe. Your son was in the Forbes magazine. Why you always got your hand out? Collecting money, selling books. And every time she set up her, her table, she's always at the door. She's always sitting at the door. And if you read in the scriptures, it tells you how sin lays at the door. See, it's something about a doorway that these demons need to sit there, okay? Now, those of you who study the doctrine, you know what that means. You know what I'm talking about. So now, she's always playing broke, you know? saying that she drives, you know, she don't got money, oh, this is Kedar's house, this is, but yet she's driving a $100,000 car, she got a pair of $5,000 earrings in her hand, and she lives in a mini mansion, okay? And when Baba Yanun got incarcerated, she gathered a few family members, it was about 11 of them, including herself, in May 12, and they got a coffin, okay? And at the time, Wakil was dating, now, now they got a coffin, and when they took this coffin, and they put all the Baba's, they put some of Baba's jewelry in there. They put some of his clothes. They put dog uh, feces in there, urine. They did put all types of debauchery, all types of degraded things you could think of. They threw inside this coffin, right? And I had asked the brother who knew about this, I said, where did she get the coffin from? He said she was dating a mortician at the time. And those of you who know, y'all know that man that was a mortician that she was dating. And, I mean, just think about it, y'all. Think about it. Let's just think. Put your mind on sci-fi for a minute. What type of person is dating a mortician? Like, you know, those are people that bury the dead. What are you doing laying up with a mortician? And then you, y'all throwing feces and blood and urine and Baba's personal belongings and did what was called the snake and tongue coffin ritual. But if you say the word will fast, snake and tongue, snake and tongue, Satan, Satan, snake and tongue. Okay? So now, when they did this ritual, you can read this in the book of Revelation. It tells you about when these 12 witches and warlocks come together and they do a ritual. The 13th person is there. May he be in spirit or in physical form. And that 13th person is the devil himself. 
okay? Now, y'all may think like, oh, that's far-fetched or it sounds like a movie, but I'm telling y'all, this is real. I put my life on it. This is real. Now, this ritual was done to make sure Baba would never get out. And it was also done to make sure that if anyone spoke the truth about this case or about Baba, it would cause confusion, okay? Now, many of you are going to say, you know, that can't be so. And I will say that, of course, but ask yourself, why is she always breaking a bone? Because you remember what I told you in the beginning about the cause and effect? Y'all can read that in the Tahuti book on page 75. Why is she always breaking a bone? Why is she always falling down the stairs? She broke her arm. She broke her back. She broke her leg, her neck, her back, her coochie, and her crack. Every time you turn around, this lady is breaking something, falling down somewhere, okay? And she has the worst attitude, you know? And the prison will forever let her communicate with Bobby Yanoon. Because they know she's a part of it. And they'll ask her, hey, do you think we should let your brother, you know, we, do you think we should let you, um, let, who do you think we should let write your brother? You know, and then they got a special clique that they, got, that they have right in Baba. And like I told the lady in Congress, I said, let me tell you how they got it set it up with Dr. York. Just like if somebody was to die, a family member, and you have those family members, they just want the money. They just want the cars. They, they fighting over money and stuff. Y'all seen it with celebrities with Prince and these so-called celebrities, these big people with all this money and how their family be doing holograms to make money. And, or, when, you know, certain people die, the producers all of a sudden come drop an album. So they figure, they let, and I explained to Lay, I said they only let the people that don't really care about him communicate with him because the people that really care, the people that really cry and wish he was home and want to see him again and would love to see him teach and would love to shake his hand and give him a hug and say, hey, we, we, we love you, brother. We know what's going on. We're not giving up on you. Those people, they don't want to write, but they let these niggas write them because guess what? They don't care. And you can't tell me that you do because guess what? Love is an action word. When you care, you show how you care by what you do, not by what you say. Okay? Now, let's move on. Now, <clears throat> I also wanted to let y'all know what Waki also did. How did Baba get locked up with this fake name, Dwight D. York? Okay? She was the one who, she was the one who, and, I, and Baba wrote me a letter about this, but he didn't say it was her. But I put two and two together, and I said, you know what, this, 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 this doesn't make any sense. A pre-sentencing investigation officer is the person that you meet when you're in prison. And these people write about your life. If you was a humanitarian, whatever you did, you know, people like me and other people will try to say, oh, my life was so horrible. Oh, I went through this, I went through that. Because you want to get sympathy from the pre sentencing investigation officer because they are going to recommend how much time you should get in prison. Waki was the one who gave that pre sentencing investigation officer, because remember, at the time when Baba was locked up, Baba didn't have, they kept moving Baba from jail to jail to jail, from Fulton County to Clayton County, from Clayton County to Jones County, from Jones County to this county. I mean, they moved Baba so many times. And if you ask any big-time, uh, you know, like, like Gotti-type person, they'll tell you that they do that. It's called diesel therapy. And the reason why they do the diesel, the diesel therapy is so that you can't look at your case. So that gives the government enough time to, to, to mess up everything, to trap you, to keep you in there. So, so while they were giving Baba diesel therapy, these people in Baba life, his very family members, were giving the, were, were setting him up with that name Dwight D. York because Malachi D. York is a diplomat with full immunity. And he's not an honorary diplomat like Fatima tried to, and um, Charles Mallory and Secretary Nippy. Sec they work for the government too. They lied to Congressman Hank Johnson and told Congressman Hank Johnson that Bob is just an honorary diplomat. When I got the paperwork from Court B, Section B, I went to Liberia, I got an extra copy of it, and it says that Bob was appointed with full immunity. I got the redacted paper in my freaking possession, okay? So where are they getting this from? Now, let's move on. 
She lied on a pre sentence investigation report and told them that his name was Dwight York, and she produced a birth certificate. Now, I don't know where the hell they got that birth certificate from, but I'm telling you right now, y'all, they are the reason. She is one of the reasons, the main reason. Like I said, she's the head witch. She's the one. She, she, if you hit that goddamn hornet's nest, all the rest of her freaking bumblebee, uh, uh, not bee, bumblebees, all the rest of them hornets going to come out and sting you. Okay, she's a head hornet in this freaking nest, all right? And that's why she is the clan mother. And if you look up and you read the parts that I call nine minds, it breaks down the clan. And it breaks down the Celtic wicked clan, KKK, the Celtic. They, cra they practice witchcraft. It's also in the book of Revelation. If you turn to the book of Revelation, you'll see Roberta Flack there. She lived in the Dakota house, and she's a black woman, and she's a witch, all right? They are witches. Make no mistake. They are witches. So is her daughter. They are witches. So is her son. They are warlocks. They practice necromancy. They are not Nuwapians. They do not love you. They do not want the master teacher home. You are wasting your time with these niggas. And if you keep hanging around them, you're going to keep getting sick, and things are going to keep happening, and your life is not going to flow like it should. Because we call out our ancestors and use our prayers, the Nathalie hear us, and they, they step in and they make things happen for us, like Baba laid it out in the doctrine. That's why those Indians died, because they were calling on Buddha. That's why certain uh, Nuwapians got enslaved, because we were calling on their Celtic Jesus. We have to call on our own. Well, these niggas here, they call on familiar spirits. They get to necromancy rituals, and it's all laid out in our book. If you go to the Master Secret, Divide and Conquer, I'm surprised. I'm not surprised at that name, Divide and Conquer. If you go, if that's, I think that's Master Secret number 13, but if you go to page 5, verse 21 through 36, I mean 21 through 26, it talks about it. If you go to page 5, verse 34, it talks about the sons of God, how they taught them white magic to the Adamite females, okay? So it's all laid out in our doctrine, family. I'm not making this up. She's a freaking witch, all right? Now, if some of you idiots been following her around, following this witch around town, trying to play her close, thinking that once Baba get out, that you're going to be close to Baba, you are sadly mistaken, okay? If you want to get close to Baba, you have to study. You have to chant. You have to become an animist. You have to become a Yanunism. Stop eating meat. Discipline yourself, okay? Now, so now, the question would be, why are they in charge? And why does Baba write them? And my answer to that would be, look, I'm not Melchizedek, you know, but I know in our doctrine in Patara, Zahuti Mus Ramus, when he met up with Zahutui, which is Moses, and he asked to follow Zahuti, Zahuti stated, look, you will not be able to follow me, nor will you be patient to do what I do, because I do things my way. And so and to, he, said, he said, how can you be patient about what you see and don't understand? And what you see, you may see it as wrong action because the Houthi, he doesn't like to be questioned. He's just like, look, I know who I am. I'm a God. Follow me. I'm smart, you know. And so he even had to restore Ramus' memory, you know, because, he, because Enosites are so forgetful. So as soon as the Houthi poked the hole in the boat, Ramus started questioning him. Yo, how could you do that? Those people are going to drown. He started jumping up and down. I laughed when I read that part. Of that. It was really funny. You know, he was like, how could you do that to those poor people? And then at the end, Zahuti broke everything down to him. He said, I poked a hole in the boat so that it could look defective, so that it could prevent the evil people from stealing it. And the owner of the boat was a professional boat repairer, so he would repair the boat. You know, and so then he, he, he just kept on. He said, you know, I'm telling you now, don't question me. So I'm just telling you that, you know, we just don't question the master teacher. Just keep walking with him. Just keep walking. He's coming out. You know, I'm your sister, y'all. I'm not going to mislead you and lie to you, okay? And, yes, I'm upset because these people been doing things to me because of what I'm doing now. They've been trying to attack me because I'm, I'm, I'm revealing who they are. I've been around them. They're devils. I'm telling you, and I tried to be nice. I tried to get them things, do their hair, buy them stuff. Man, please, you're wasting your time. These niggas are evil, okay? So now after the snake and tongue coffin ritual was completed, Waki got with Joe, that's Robbie's husband, the white boy, okay? And make no mistake, 
okay? He's a Caucasian. That nigga keep his head shaved so you can't see that farah on his head. But he don't have no wabar, okay? Now, he was also the head of the Masonic Lodge, okay? <laughs> now, I don't know who this white boy thought he was. I mean, I never, he knew, he already knew. Him and his wife knew. I did not like him. I used to write Bob and say, who is this white man? I don't like him. I mean, I was to the point where I, I hated this dude. And I was like, I don't even know why, but I just don't like him. And then, when I started to investigate stuff, I found out why I don't like this nigga. And when I finished telling y'all, y'all not going to like him either. If you love Baba, you're, gonna, you're, you're not supposed to like people that are against him, okay? But if you take a look, you know, if, and, and people say, oh, he's not white, he is a, he's a white boy. Because if you take a look at their Masonic book, okay, Baba calls him a white man. And he makes references to how Caucasians tie their bow ties, and he puts a picture of Jody. <laughs> so if you look, you'll see it. And I know I wasn't supposed to look at that book, but I worked in the office, and I just ran through it, okay? I worked in the office in Athens with Nabatech, a.k.a. Carla Thomas, and I'm going to tell you all about her, too. Now, let me finish this about Joe. Joe had a title of a police officer, okay? And I'm sure he was one of them. Twelve at that coffin ritual because all of them used to go up to visit Bobby and Bobby would always say to them, why am I still here? Bobby used to say that to them. So if I'm asking you a question, it's just like if I'm a, you know, I have children, I come in the house and I say, why is this sitting here like this? I'm saying that because I'm, as a parent, I'm asking my children, why is this sitting here like this? Bobby would say this to them every time they came up to visit. Why am I still here? That's what Bobby would say to them. But let me tell you what Joe did, this little grimy freaking white boy. And by the way, he's not coming to Africa. Bobby told him to his face he's not going. So if he try to, try to front with all that African shawl on like he won't come into America, like he getting ready to sing, she's your queen, you know, standing up there in front of us like he's some freaking, he's not going. Bobby told him he's not going to Africa because he's not rooted there. Okay? He said, you're not going because you're not rooted there. But he looked at Carlita and said, she can go because she's rooted there. Because she's a mulatto mixed with black. But Joe is a Caucasian. And he told Robbie, his wife, if you don't leave him, you ain't going either. Okay? Now, Joe had a title of a police officer. And I'm sure he was one of the 12 at that coffin ritual. But check this out, family, and listen to this, what the white Kakasu devil does, Joseph Hibner. He tells all the seven officers, right, that are known to Wapians to resign from office. He, this is what he said to them. He said, it was said, he said, he said oh, Pops wants y'all to resign because when Habiba came out with the truth, the media tried to hide it. And Pops' words in court were, you know, he was like, the media tried to hide it. And Pops was like, resign. Now, y'all know, when Baba wants something done, Baba puts it in writing. So that was a lie. But I'm going to tell you why Joe told those officers to resign. Because guess what? As an officer, and I'm going to tell you because I got a cousin named Tiv who was an officer in Brooklyn, 77 Precinct. And as I told, shared with y'all before, I've been in prison. I used to boost out the stores. I used to shoplift. And I was good, too. Okay? And I'm not patting myself on the back. But, hey, I did what I did. It's, hey, <laughs> all, the hard, all the crazy stuff they did to us as a race, I could care less about their freaking department stores. And it's, and it's Baba who saved my life because who knows where I'd be right now. Because, because I, live, I don't live by the barter system. I wasn't a taxpayer. F Caesar and his freaking taxes. But anyway, um, um, Joe, okay, when I got locked up, my Uncle Tibbs, so every now and then I would get caught. And I, was, and I would get mad and say, I'm going to tell my Uncle Tibbs he's a police officer. Oh, and they would say, oh, your Uncle Tibbs is a police officer? Yup, 77 precinct. And I would yell out his badge number. And guess what, y'all? They would let me go. I swear to you. They would let me go. Because sometimes when, a, when, you, when you're in a department store and you're doing something wrong, you know, just like cops do with their guns, the store detectives, be act, they, be, they be going ham, grabbing you, throwing you, pulling you around, throwing you like, okay, come on now. You know, I just got a, a couple of silk shirts and some leather pants, you know. Y'all going to try to kill me for this? I'm not trying to kill nobody, you know. And when, they, when I got treated like that one time, I mentioned it, and they got scared and they let me go. So I'm saying that to say that when you got police on your side, that's power. So why would Joe 
tell all the seven officers to resign from office, okay? And I wrote their names down. These are the officers that he told to resign, okay? And he he lied, okay? He told, where did I write that down at? Hold on. He told Officer William Walker. He told Officer Michael Berkeley. He told Officer Leon Adams. He told Officer Ranford Ropper, Officer Jermal Cedrics, Officer Bobby Dixon, and Officer Antoine Dean. Okay, Joe made up this story to have them resign because you see, once you get the power of the police off the force, then and and off of our side, then they went to work on Habiba. Okay, they got in her head about how and Habiba was really, really seriously wanting to just end all of this because she felt bad. She thought about Kathy and her children not having their mother there. She felt bad because these sisters lived together in the same bait. Some of them had children at the same time and used to mate. You know, some of their children played together. So, you know, this was like a family affair that they broke up, and she's so bad. But they see the devil, they, let me tell you who got to Habiba, Joaquin, Joe, Rochelle, Nifu, and I think her job, Baba's daughter, was there too. I'm not sure. But I know Baba wrote me and told me about how, how Habiba was going to come forth with the truth. But then he felt like people got in her head. You know, and, and then I started watching them, and then I started asking questions, and they was like, yeah, she was there. So this is what they did to Habiba. They got in her head. Joe got the officers to resign, so now Bob don't got no power. Because those officers could have easily went to Washington, D.C., and went to the, the Justice Department. They could have easily went to the Justice Department and, and told them that, look, they're abusing Dr. York. They're transferring from jail to jail to jail, okay? So they got to Habiba. And then they used Jamie Alvarez to cock block. And y'all know what I mean when I say that, you know, because a man can make a woman feel, you know, as if he wants her, yet he's really being used by the, by the, by the evil reptilians, you know, the boy and girl code to keep her out the way. So Jamie Alvarez, he had no respect for the master's former mate anyway. Knowing that that used to be Bob's mate, he should have knew that she was hands off, but he went anyway. Like I said, y'all, this was a plot, this was a plot from the witches to keep that beaver from helping, being that she was the key witness. Now, one day I asked Joe, when he got back from a visit with Bob, I said, yo, um, you know, whose idea was that for to make those officers resign? And he act like he didn't know what I was talking about. But you see, I'm going to let these words be known, you know, and these are Bible words from the visit that, that Joe is not welcome in Africa because he's not rooted there, okay? And if you read Pasadak chapter 9, it says about the sacred seminar, it tells you that if a woman mates with a Caucasian, she is not allowed. We, we do not have to accept her as our sister. She, we do not have to accept her in this tribe, okay? So now, if you're a police officer and you got the power, why would you resign? Y'all know Sheriff Howard Richard Sills was torturing Bible. Why would y'all do that? Why would y'all tell, the, 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 tell all those officers to do that? Why? Because these devils plotted the scheme to keep Malachi locked up. And when Sarah Muhammad spoke the truth about Jacob York and the crew and what happened when she went to Southeast Florida, guess what Joe did? Cock block. Went and got her, got her pregnant, had her in her family. Okay, we're going to keep this one shut up over here. I'm telling you, y'all, these niggas is demons, yo. They devils, okay? They used to do all, him and Robbie would do all these fake rallies with these fake T-shirts, collecting money. It was all a scam, okay? And Melchizedek, not Bob, because you know Bob is an avatar, Melchizedek wrote me in a letter and told me that they were taking all of the money and turning in one-third of it, using it to pay their bills, okay? So now let's move on. Now, there were other members of this tribe who y'all don't know about, like the brother Rick. Y'all know who Rick is. He's slandering Bobby now. Now, 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 now my thing is this. How are you going to stand up in front of us and be so gun ho Bobber, you're going up on a visit every day, you're coming back talking to us about this case, when, when really your whole job was to prevent Bobber from getting out. Rick was the one that made sure that Bobber's 2255 motion was going to be, Rick, was going to be weak. And, of course, he had helpers because Nifu was on it. Dusswa was there. I mean, Baba sent us all to see Attorney Latimer, and I was there with me, Dusswa York, Nifu, Al Woodall. He's another in, uh, informant. Um, 
the brother uh, uh, Mitsu Hotep, he was there. I don't know if he's an informant. I don't think he's an informant. But he was there because um, Baba wanted him to be there. He was named on the list of the people that Baba wanted to be there to see that lawyer. And I was there, and I watched them niggas. Let that man, Latimer, Latimer, whatever his name is, mess up Baba's 2255. And then after Rick succeeded in doing that, he disappeared. He left. And now you don't see him no more. Okay? So Rick knew that this was Baba's last chance with the 2255. And his job was to make sure that nothing subsided. Rick was a warlock, a necromancer, shapeshifter, and an evil ass brother who went up to see Baba on regular visitations with others who were all conspirators to this mission. Rick worked directly with his ex mate Nifu, aka Bastet, aka Elizabeth Westbrook, the so called messenger, who was also a part of the conspiracy to keep Baba locked up. Make no mistake, family, they were both government informants. Raina told me out of her own mouth that one day when Nifu's phone rang and she answered it, it was the FBI. And they asked, thinking that Raina was Nifu, they said to her, did you get the repatriation papers? 